My connection to Buddhism started from birth. My parents named me Fo Shen. The meaning of the Chinese characters translates to Buddha born. Do they expect me to lead humankind to enlightenment? <laughs> Perhaps. My hometown is in Kaohsiung, south of Taiwan. The building behind the tree you see is where I grew up. In it, things are modest, except the top floor was transformed into an elaborate altar with Buddha statues covered in gold. As a kid, my mom would force me to meditate with the Buddha for one incense time. I remember wanting to go play outside instead, so that I would attempt to break the incense in half <laughs> and relight it. <laughs> I was clever. My mom would also bring me to retreats at the monastery, and at age seven, I voluntarily took up monkhood. My personal choice was granted, but later everyone said I was too young to know what was happening. So here I am. <laughs> Nevertheless, I did take the monk vow on the five precepts. And to this day, I still feel obliged to abide by these principles. But the one that I struggle the most with is no killing. And that has to do with me being a scientist. I came to the States at age 11 and found a passion for science with a degree in microbiology from UW. I'm fascinated by microbes that are living around us and with us, and their existence is why I have a PhD. Mouse is an animal model that I avoid at all costs because I do not want to break my vow of no killing. Microbes are an exception, though. They are so tiny. <laughs> you, you can't even see them with the naked eye and show no emotions, or so I believe. So for the past decade, I've been working with them to see how they cause human diseases. In my experiments, I would take human cells and bacteria, put them together, and observe how our cells respond to bacterial attack. It was like watching the battle unfold, and it was enlightening to see their interactions under the microscope. Who won? Human or bacteria? I would repeat this type of experiment until a pattern was found. But on one unremarkable day, something hit me. That day, I spread ethanol and bleach around my workspace and my hands, to remove any lasting contaminants. I felt the movement so routine. I noticed the waste that I had generated that day and thought, did I do all that? I felt guilty. I felt guilty because I became indifferent and I was simply doing it as a means to an end. Then I peeked into the microscope that day and remember thinking, those tiny creatures are moving like living beings, like us. And in the flash, it brought me back to the time when I lived in the monastery, praying for both form and formless life. The exercise serves as a reminder that all life is precious. And that day forward, I started to question my conduct as a scientist. Is my act of killing cells justify in the name of science? Looking deeper into the question, I realized that consciousness is everywhere even at the microscopic level. And I could no longer ignore this fact. Who was I to decide that one being was more important than another? But I could start somewhere by being mindful of how I handle them, for having appreciation for them being in my experiments, for allowing me to make discoveries and bring me closer to understanding the complexity of life. I still struggle. As a scientist, I'm naturally data-driven. My mood follows the waves of positive and negative results. <laughs> but if I allow myself to pause and examine my actions like a monk, then I gain greater clarity for my responsibilities and purpose in science. The little monk me would never have guessed I would be a scientist today, struggling with the first precept. It is an evolving journey for me as I continue to strike a balance between my ethics and actions guided by constant reflection. Today, I have changed my approach in the lab based on what I call the five precepts as a scientist. I can't avoid causing harm to those tiny creatures that I work with, but I can treat them with respect. As for the rest of the precepts, they play an equally important role in reminding me to act generously and responsibly toward my peers, to tell the truth about the data, to stay lucid, to be creative. This talk is not so much about me as it is about my mom. She gave me my name. A few years ago, she was fully ordained as a Buddhist nun. She's not my teacher who constantly reminds me to show compassion to, for all life. 
which is more fitting to bear the name Buddha born. For now, my name is Phil, and I'm a scientist. <laughs>